So it's been a while since I've been on this channel. Um, I guess I can be a little bit more open because nobody has this handle. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Like the last time I was on here was three months ago when I declared that I was running for mayor. Um, and as to what has transpired in the meantime, it is all of the above. It is random. It really seems to be um, a little bit nuts, a little bit crazy. So um, I can talk about the stuff on here uh, a little bit more than I am even on Facebook because that is already a step of faith to say the stuff that I'm saying with that. Um, when coming home, that I got involved with sovereignty movements, uh, with going to Mauna Kea, didn't know why. God speaking and saying, hey, independence happens. That, that's not my agenda, I know that, you know. So when I go up to Kilauea, and I'm seeing all the housing up there, and it comes to the military barracks and how they're unutilized and just sitting, it's like, you know what? As to the thing that I always was thinking, when I heard different ones arguing about, like, what do you, you know, the, the coming reinstatement of the kingdom of Hawaii, it's like, you know what? I agree with you in the way of what happened was wrong, but what do you do about it, you know? So when I'm going up to, flying up, last minute, it would seem to go to Mount Kea of all places on the Big Island, something, you know, with TMT and me not wanting to um, be involved with something that I didn't have an opinion on. I've been hearing about it for, you know, eight months previous or whatever it happened to be. Um, but I was like, you know, I don't have an opinion on that. But when I get back, one of the first things God was telling me to do was to go to Mauna Kea. So when I'm driving up to the day before going to Mauna Kea, we went to Kilauea, you know, met, um, and I'm jumping around, I know, but previous to going up that day, we had met different people, or I had gotten involved with different groups um, that had come together last minute, and I'm just seeing like it was all symbolic in the way of what happened with the Treaty of Mount PT. And that is another thing that adds on with what's going to happen with the reinstatement of the Kingdom of Hawaii. But um, <clears throat> anyway, to the point, Kilauea, we're driving up, seeing all the military barracks and such, I was just sitting vacant. And it's like, you know what, that is what you do about it. This automatically, like there's no ownership to fight over. What happened with sovereignty, or not sovereignty, but in, uh, annexation was wrong you know, in the overthrow in that way. But it's like, what you do about it is automatically, this stuff goes back to the kingdom. This stuff, this house, these houses go back to the people of Hawaii. You know, you put people in these houses here. It's already built, it's already ready. Don't argue about as to what happened, you know, because this is obviously the minimum that you have to do. But on the way up there, I have the highlight reel going, you know, and I call it that because it's, it's the thoughts that you know are not your own. They're not. So God is saying, um, you're going to be an advisor to a governor. You know, what are you talking about? Like, this is when I first got home and I thought I was going to be involved with ministry. You know, the thing that I was running from, but from for 13 years, you know. So it's like, in going, he had already started to, ever since I got divorced or separated from Jenny, I wasn't divorced yet. And I, I don't even think I am right now. Signed everything that she wanted. Um... But it was early on. I had just gotten back from flying up. No, I take that back. I had flown back. I bought a ticket like four hours before the flight took off to go back to Anchorage. Didn't know why. I just had a, a sermon from Priscilla Shira saying, go back. The situation you don't feel has changed, that you don't feel qualified to go back and expect any, anything different. You need to go back now, immediately. So I did. I only flew back to Anchorage. And I'm jumping around, I know. I'm sorry. I flew back to Anchorage, signed all the paperwork that she wanted, basically to finalize the divorce from a woman that I just loved and adored, but apparently I didn't recognize. Um, you know, and her getting involved with a coworker and stuff. Like, I know the guy, I know the guy. Um, and she, she got, you know, involved with that other, not in that way that I know of, but the coworker that, you know, she's a lesbian and, uh, that playing with Ouija boards and different stuff. I'm assuming there was things that I found around the house, but uh, as to dealing in the occult and that lifestyle that goes with homosexuality, that's how you end up with possession and uh, being afflicted with uh, Jezebel spirits and such, which is what she has. So how do you speak to that kind of thing? You know, this is the love of my life and you're talking about it in a way of documenting the testimony throughout the process. You know what I mean? Like, how would you talk about that? That's my, my question to you. Like, how would you speak on the situations that you're going through in a loving way as to somebody that just just ripped your heart out? 
that you're waiting on that you could just as easily have somebody else that you insist on having only because of the testimony and the history previous to all this stuff happening. Like, she deserved better for years, you know? And I was doing what I thought I could in certain ways, but not enough in others. Like, I wasn't romantic in the ways that I should have been. I got lazy in some ways, you know? So well, she deserved better in those years, and I definitely deserve better right now. I can go easily go get somebody else. You don't think I want to? But I love her in spite of that. In spite of all that. But to wait on her, to not hear from her, to worry in ways about what's going on with her, her, her is my dog for my life. But um, to have to walk away from that, to go to Hawaii, the last place that I wanted to go, in obedience to God, like with, with the whole thing would happen, and I'll get back to my point, which there's a couple of them, but um, to, to leave the situation, you know, when you have certain ones saying, when God is joined together, that no man turn apart. To have her just go from the feeling like or saying that I couldn't get back quick enough and then when I get back I couldn't leave quick enough. To just go from feeling all of that to seeing all that emotion to nothing, to feeling nothing. I didn't know at the time that she was possessed. That's what that is. You know, that is a Jezebel spirit. The purpose of that spirit is to wreck Christian households. And that is exactly what happened in the meantime. But when I got back to Hawaii, because I had references to Abraham and Isaac and him putting Isaac on the altar. You know? God didn't ask for Ishmael, he wanted Isaac, the chosen, the thing that he valued most, the thing that he waited on. <sighs> to leave that behind, to put that on the altar and then come to Hawaii and not know why. When he says, you're going to be an advisor to a governor, I'm thinking when the prophecy was ministry and leadership and I was thinking leadership and ministry it's kind of what I assumed it to be when he says when I'm driving up to Kilauea you're going to be an advisor to a governor I'm thinking I need to go back to school because I'm going to be a pastor um, eventually and then I'm going to pastor or be the head of a church or something um, and then after or amidst that I'm getting video sent to me by a cousin talking about when the trumpet sounds and uh, when a president goes into the Oval Office and has the Holy Spirit come upon him um, and just just references to president I'm like that's not ministry at all I, like what is going on what is this about you know and it's like okay I know what Michael wants which is none of this and it, it's left between two uh Two positions is this is uh, well first of all is Micah crazy like you just hear and stuff or is this actually the Holy Spirit leading you in this way or is this the devil speaking doubt or speaking things over your life that just don't make sense so it's been three months sovereignty was one thing but to get on Facebook and talk about like what started with the divorce and then to just have this daily documentation of this whole process to where I run from there not only but I win it, a position that I didn't want and ask for, to running for president in eight years 